So you have successfully finished your GCSEs and now you're about to begin A-level biology. But you've probably heard so many times that the jump from GCSE to A-level is huge. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips of how you can make that jump in terms of the level of demand, the challenge of the work, the amount of effort you have to put in as manageable as possible so you have the best start to your A-levels. So here are my four top tips. Number one is refresh your memory. As a GCSE student you then have about a two month long summer and that is amazing because you deserve that rest but it also means you've got two months to forget everything you've ever learned at GCSE and then you start your A-levels which is so much harder and you can't remember anything. So the first thing that I recommend is in the final week or maybe the final two weeks before you go and start your A-level courses refresh your memory of some of the key GCSE topics that are going to help you in the first A-level topics. Now those include topics such as cell structure and knowing the different organelles inside of animal cells, plant cells and prokaryotic cells as well. Also a reminder of some of the molecules you learn such as DNA, so looking at the DNA nucleotide, proteins and how the amino acids are the monomers and the biochemical tests which is basically the food tests, so the test for starch, the test for sugars, the tests for ethanol and the test for proteins. Now if you aren't really sure how best to go about refreshing your memory on this or you want some guided help then I've got a free masterclass for you which covers exactly that. So this year on Wednesday the 28th of August I'm running a one hour free masterclass for students just like you who have finished their GCSEs and are about to start their A-level and in this one hour masterclass those topics I just talked you through I will be the one refreshing your memory of it and not only that I'm going to teach you the first two A-level lessons for free as well so you can go into your A-levels feeling confident and knowing that you already had that boost ahead start. You'll also get all of the slides that I use so you'll get a set of notes essentially as well before you even begin. So if you do want to come along the link is in the description below. That's 10am on Wednesday the 28th of August and I hope to see you all there. Number two is knowing what resources to buy in preparation. Now unlike GCSEs where you are given an exercise book to write all of your notes in and stick all your work in. For A-levels you are expected to provide your own resources. So what I recommend is you prepare for this by buying yourself some lined paper, that could be a notepad or just a ream of lined paper, and also ring binder folders for your different A-levels. You probably will also want some file dividers as well so you can organise it by topic or by teacher. You might also want to have a glow up of your stationery and if you're anything like me then you absolutely want to do this every year anyway, but you might want a new pencil case pens, pencils and things like that. I absolutely love this stage of preparing for every new year because I love stationery and you might have actually seen that this year I got all of my new stationery for back to school from WH Smith. Here's the real here, I went a little bit wild. The next resource that I recommend that you might want to buy is the CGP Head Start A-Level Biology. Now these are really small and relatively cheap books and these revision guides cover the GCSE topics and the transition of how those are different at A-Level. So it's quite a helpful guide for you to have a look at in those final two weeks before you start your A-Levels. But also as you learn each new topic, it helps to bridge that gap so you can see this is what you knew at GCSE, this is now what you need to know at A-level. And again, I'll link those in the description. So if you did want to check those out, those are just there for you. As well as that, to prepare for the entire two years of your A-levels or the one year if you're just doing AS, I would highly recommend my A-level biology notes. These are my number one best sellers and I've had so many positive reviews on those. Students love these because unlike a textbook where you have all of the theory, just like my notes, they've got all of the theory, Theory. My notes have lots of images to help make it more accessible and understandable, key terms on every page, key terms highlighted, key marking points, topic summaries, essay links for AQA, examiners hints and tips as well. It essentially covers everything you could possibly need to know for the theory for A-level biology. And not only that, they're PDF so you get instant access and then you can use them on your phone, you can use them on a tablet, you can use them on a computer, laptop or you can print them out, whichever you'd prefer. And I do recommend that if you do get these notes that you print them out, take them to lesson and then you don't have to spend ages writing in lesson, instead you can highlight and annotate the notes and you can be more actively listening in a lesson. Also it means you don't have to write up your notes after a lesson or make revision notes because I've done it for you. And as a teacher of over 14 years of A-level 
Trilogy, you know you can trust that content. Now, if you are interested in those, I'll link them below and I'm running a 30% discount on those until the 1st of September. You just need to enter the discount code HEADSTART and you'll get 30% off either my AQA, OCRA or CIE A-level notes. And if you are taking AQA, I'm also doing a 30% discount on my A-level big three, which are my three biggest selling resources, the A-level notes, revision flashcards, and my active recall question workbook as well. All linked below. Number three then is preparing for the shift that you need to have in terms of A-level mindset. A-levels are a lot harder than GCSE. I mean, the clue's in the name. The A stands for advanced. It's an advanced level, meaning it is going to be harder. And the reason I bring this up is sometimes there are students who at GCSE can get really good grades with minimal effort and minimal work. And most of those students, when it gets to A-levels, cannot do the same thing because it is harder content, there's more information, the skills are harder, there's more application questions. You will have to increase the amount of effort and time that you're putting into your work. It's actually completely normal that students that got eights and nines at GCSE often get something like a grade C in their first A-level biology test. And it's because of not realizing A-levels are that much harder, you do have to put that much more effort in and change the sorts of revision that you're doing. And if you want to know more about how to prepare for the first A-level biology test, how you should be revising differently, how you might need to change your study skills and mindset, then check out this video that I've already done, which is how to prepare for the first A-level test, which talks you through exactly that. But as long as you're aware that it is gonna be harder, which means you're probably gonna to have to put in a bit more time, more effort, and do more active revision, which is things like testing yourself with flashcards, doing exam questions. And if you stick with me, looking at all of my different theory videos and these help tip videos, then I'll help you to bump up those grades and make sure you succeed. Now, my final tip is following on from that one, and it is study habits and skills. Now, one of the big differences from GCSE to A-level is, at A-level, you don't have a lesson every Every single hour of the school day you have some blank time which is often called study periods and that is because you are set so much more work in terms of homework at a levels compared to GCSE you have those blanked out times during the day so that there's the time available for you to do that work now don't fall into the trap of thinking these study periods are free periods which is amazing you can hang out chat with your friends just sit and eat have a nap I mean by all means use some of them for that because you do need to relax as well well, but if you don't use most of those study periods for study, you will quickly find the homework piling up, it'll become stressful, overwhelming, and you'll see your grade slowly going down. So the study habit there is use your study periods for study. Now in terms of the study skills, this is going back to what I was saying about making sure that you are doing more active revision. So make sure that you're not simply copying notes or watching YouTube videos because those are both passive meaning you are not testing yourself that you have understood and remember the information. You're just taking it all in like a sponge. And that might help you understand in the first place, but it won't help you with the application questions, the exam technique, and it won't improve your long-term memory. So instead you need to change how you're doing things. If you do like watching help YouTube videos, then instead of just sitting and listening, try pausing it and creating flashcards at each point when you're watching my YouTube videos. And I'm talking about key terms or key marks marking points. And then watching the videos become an active strategy because you're turning it into flashcards that you can then test yourself with. You also want to make sure that you are going to be saving plenty of time to do exam questions when you're preparing for any class test. And you can get lots of exam questions arranged by topic or by skill on my website for free, www.missestrick.co.uk. So that is it, my four top tips for preparing for the jump from GCSE to A-level. I hope you found those helpful and I really hope to see you on Wednesday the 28th of August at 10 a.m. for my free masterclass where I get you ready to have the most positive and manageable start to the A-levels. Links below, click that link and I'll see you there.